The all-fit implant system by Dr. Ide Dental meets modern implantologists' every wish with its variety of models. The implants are made of a high-grade titanium alloy. They are double-blasted in the anusal section. The implants of the all-fit system are considered to be especially economical. The same can be said for the tightly organized instruments. The drills are coated with titanium nitrite to lengthen their service life. From the transfer post and lab analog to abutments for any application and bars and bar posts, a useful range of accessories and structural parts are available. Convincingly precise tools have been filed down for easier use and success is guaranteed. Dr. Ide Dental documents production with a batch tracking system. A barcode on the packaging contains all the relevant data for this. Each package is accompanied by a removable label that has important details such as the product description and product code, the latter also being in plain text. It can be transferred to the patient file. The X-ray picture shows the edentalous mandible of the case we've chosen with the previously fabricated drilling template. In this case, a prosthetic restoration will be performed in the mandible. A bar attachment is planned for fixing the prosthesis. It is anchored with an internal octagon to four intraforaminally inserted and instantly loaded type STO implants. The bone strength is ascertained to determine the best implant diameter in advance. The jawbone is exposed gradually from quadrant to quadrant so that the video can be filmed without too much bleeding. As it turned out, there was almost no need for these precautionary measures here because, thanks to the well-chosen anaesthetic, there was no severe bleeding. In the dental lab, a drilling template was made from light curing tray material by Dr. Ide Dental to improve the accuracy of the pilot holes. These holes are made with a template and pilot burr from the regular Dr. Ide Dental instrument set. In this case, implants with a diameter of 3.7 millimeters can be inserted based on the bone thickness determined. The choice of implant diameter should ensure that a vestibular and lingual osteon of at least one millimeter remains. This prevents later bone resorptions and assures long-term success. For preparing the implant bed, drills with diameters of 2, 2.5, 2.8 and 3.2 millimeters are used successively after pre-drilling, followed by a 3.7 millimeter DRK finishing drill. It is advisable to remove the drill from the entry hole several times during seating in order to rinse out milled bone chips. Conical implants are used for the instant loading. The implant bed is drilled in a diameter sequence starting at 2 mm. Finally, the DRK 4.1 shaping drill is used. Its graduated design ensures high primary stability of the implants in the jawbone. The PDG depth gauge assists the attempt to create sufficient parallelism between the individual implants right at the time the implant bed is being laid. The direction of the drill can be fathomed nicely with the aid of this pin.
It is important for the alignment of the implants to be parallel so that they load evenly. This also makes it easier to fabricate the bar in the lab. The DRK 3.7 drill, used last for STO implants, cuts up to just a few millimeters to the final length. This ensures that there is enough bone substance in the drilled hole to maintain secure primary stability. Finally, all holes are carefully rinsed with sodium chloride solution. Leftover bone and periosteal parts are removed with the lure forceps. All fit system implants are supplied double packed. The external blister pack is easy to open. The inner sterile packaging can be removed. After the plastic tube is removed, the insertion aid can be screwed onto the implant without contact. The implant is separated from its mounting at a predetermined breaking point and can now be inserted in the implant hole also without contact. A ratchet is available for screwing in the implant efficiently. A ratchet with torque control is also provided for securing screws and posts. It has already been introduced at the start. Terra Cortrill should be applied to the locking screw before it is screwed in. This guarantees that there will be no bacterial contamination of the thread. Loose suturing is now done so that an attached gingiva can remain around the implants. Before the impression is taken, the locking screws are removed and impression posts screwed in. Transfer posts are then screwed into the implants. The impression is taken in a custom-made impression tray in which the dental technician has already made openings for the fastening screws of the transfer posts.
The recesses in the impression tray are checked. To prevent the impression material accidentally leaking out of the tray, an adhesive designed for the impression compound must be applied. In this regard, it is important to also check the tray margin carefully. A hydrophilic impression compound with a polyether or A-silicone base by Dr. Ede Dental is used to take the impression. The screws of the post can be removed from the implant through the recesses in the impression tray. The transfer posts remain in the impression. The impression posts are screwed to the lab analogues before the impression is poured out. The result is a precision plaster model that shows the oral situation and position of the implants very precisely. The bar posts are then screwed to the lab analogues. The bars are fabricated from pre-formed bar profiles. At the same time, pieces of an appropriate length are prepared and fitted to the bar posts. The joints between the bar and bar post should be as small as possible. The bar profiles made of a titanium alloy are laser welded to the bar posts. The welding must be very exact to prevent stresses. The bar must sit tension free on the lab analogues, not that easy a job. Alternatively, the bars can also be soldered to the bar posts if they are made of precious metal or cobalt chrome. If the bar structure could be fixed tension-free to the working model, it must also be connected very securely and tension-free to the implants in the mouth. The dental technician liberally grinds out the base of the prosthesis so that a complete assembly with non-hardening lining material can firstly be fixed to it. The bar is now screwed to the implants in the mouth. It's easy to see that the polished bar fits very well and can be seated on the implants without any trouble. The bar is then fixed with titanium screws. The prepared prosthesis is checked to ensure it can be placed on the bars without any problems. The free spaces under the bars must be blocked out with wax to ensure that the lining material does not enclose the bars basally. A colorless liner was applied to the basal surfaces of the prosthesis to guarantee a permanent connection of the lining material to the denture acrylic. Naturally, Preformed bar riders made of metal are later inserted into the base of the prosthesis after the implants are fully healed. However, the soft lining material absorbs abrupt loads on the implants for about eight weeks and thus protects them from inconvenient stress during the healing phase.
The intercuspation of the lower denture with the upper one guides it into a secure central occlusion during the lining material's setting phase. From the anesthesia to the seating of the prosthesis, the treatment lasted about six and a half hours. During the lab work phase, the patient was allowed a short time to sleep or relax. The aesthetically convincing restoration is the result of methodical planning and the use of a proven implant system as well as the dentist's and dental technician's excellent teamwork.